Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now, I'm a big fan of the launch pad by Novation. We have one over here, so I can get at it for you. This is a great controller for launching clips in the session view in Ableton that we have open here in the background. So when Novation reached out to me and asked if I'd like to check out the brand new launch key Mark III range, I was really interested because this is like a combination of a MIDI keyboard and a pad controller so you don't have to plug two devices in. So today I think we'll check it out. Novation are a cool UK company that have been making MIDI controllers and synthesizers for decades. Some of you might remember the Ultranova, Supernova synths from the early 90s. So it was an exciting moment when they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try this one out. But the thing is, what angle should we take for the video? Sanjay and Lou Pop and others have already done some great reviews exploring the features of this. And if you want to know more, you can look on the manufacturer's website or read the manual. So I thought today on my video, we'll actually make some music with this. So in just a second, we will unbox this, hook it up to Ableton, put it through its paces and see what it can do. And we'll also take this opportunity to try out the new Roland Cloud Xenology JX8P synthesizer model bank plugin. It sounds pretty awesome, I think. We'll find out today by composing a little synth pop synth wave track together. So that's the plan for today. I hope it sounds interesting. Let's get started. Okay, before we dive into the tools and the technology, let's break down the song that we're about to create. I think it's always nice to go to the piano first and just work on the chords and the melody because after all, that's more important than anything else. So. This is the idea I've got for today's track. This is the main riff. Just like this. Sounds nice. And I must admit, this riff is not something that I made up. It's from my, it's well, it's actually one of the background, background compositions one of my absolute favorite YouTube channels of all time, a guy called Harry Dwyer. And this particular melody he composed. And it's called Speedboat Melodies. If you check out his channel, you'll know exactly why. But I'm just not just going to uh, steal it and borrow it from him. And he was pretty cool with me doing this, by the way. I'm actually going to develop this a little bit further or change it a little bit. And I'm not sure it's going to be better but we'll try and make it my own anyway. So, here's what I thought we might do. We'll start off with this. And then we'll take it further, like this maybe. Sounded a bit too classical there. Let's try one more. Uh... Okay, I think I've got something a little bit better right now. Take a listen to this. I play it different every time. the main riff, something like that. I play it different every time, so I'm not exactly sure what we'll end up with. But we need a melody as well, and I think we'll have something that goes like this.
Okay, so that's the composition I have in mind. Let's go and take a look at the technology. Okay, camera boy Eddie has just joined us so he can help me with the unboxing here. Thank you very much. So let's get on with this. I'm actually gonna switch back to Ableton. There we go. So let's take a look. So this is the 25 key model. I was actually hoping to get the 37, but that was not available at the time. But I might end up trading this up actually for the 49 and, and the 61, because you get a lot more faders. Let's open it up. There you have it, completely plastic, of course, as you would expect. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> this, why don't they go down? Ah, I was thinking of very, very shallow keys there, but the reason for that is that we have a foam pad here in the bottom. Let's get that out. And that feels perfectly fine, actually. There's your pads. Okay, let's connect it up to the computer and see how it works with Ableton. Really glad to see this has a beefy, chunky printer style USB connection, not the flimsy USB C or micro mini USB or anything like that, and a proper MIDI DIN there. That's pretty unusual on a USB keyboard. No, oh, an expression pedal input as well, sustain pedal or something like that. Fantastic. Okay, let's install the drivers or whatever we need to do to get this thing up and running. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, here it is connected to Ableton then. So we have all the pad lights coming on in all of their glory. Nice little screen over there as well. But this is gonna be a bit harder than I thought. I was not immediately able to get this up and running and understanding all of the controls, let's get out of the settings here. So I think in this video, we'll be figuring it out together as we go. But let me just show you the basics here. So uh, I have just recorded a few dummy clips up here in Ableton then, just some empty clips there. Uh, and we'll go over this. I'm gonna connect up the screen capture and good audio in a second. So I'll be able to talk you through this. But what we see on the pads here, pads here is the same number of you can sort of start and stop clips. Let me show you that. So if I press here, then we'll start playing that drums clip that we have up there. To stop it, I'm just gonna press down there. You can actually have different modes here for this uh, bottom line of pads if you want to mute or solo tracks as well. So we can start things going there, bring in the drums. stop them both and everything is quantized to the nearest bar in Ableton right now we have some navigation here up and down which will move it up and down on the screen so you can choose which row of clips you want to activate this button will allow you to launch the entire row at once these are pretty nice we have instant mappings here these eight knobs which feel pretty nice actually are going to move the parameters here in my Ableton rack. I've actually put Xenology into an instrument rack. So we get instant mapping of all of these controls here that I've assigned up here. I'll talk about more, talk more about that later. But if we just give you a quick tour of the front panel then, we have the shift button here, which can be used to select different modes for the encoders and the pads. Track left and right, we have there, which is going to swap up and down between those. We have some chord modes, arpeggiator modes, scale modes as well, that I won't be covering today, plus minus on the octaves. Let's just change track. Okay, you get the idea. The mod, mod uh, modulation wheel is there, pitch bend wheel is there, they feel quite okay. In fact, the whole feel of this controller is quite solid and sturdy and the keys feel nicer. I had the previous generation of launch key, but did feel it felt a bit flimsy, but this is an improvement. Uh, this is where we go up and down through the arrangement. I may have mentioned that. Uh, over here on the right, this is where you choose the different modes of the pads. Now over here on the right, we have transport controls, stop, record, play. 
This is the loop button. It's nice to see we have the capture MIDI there. This is a feature in Ableton that captures MIDI even when you're not recording. If you come up with a nice jam but you didn't have the record button on, you can actually recover that. We have Quantize, which I've tried and it works really nice to quantize to whatever setting you have configured in Ableton. The click to turn the metronome on and off and a very useful undo feature. Really glad to see that one here. I'm sure we'll be using that one a great deal today. As for Xenology then, if I select a track here, I've got it in an instrument rack. We can open up the plugin itself there so you can see what it looks like, a synth bass here. And this is one of the new model expansion banks, the JX8P, one of Roland's classic legendary analog synthesizers, now available, the first model bank for Xenology. So this is a circuit board component emulation perfect uh, reproduction of the JXAP, that's the theory anyway. Click on edit here and we have a very nice user interface with access to all of the controls that were on the original synthesizer. Now I think it's time to hook up a decent microphone, get my screen capture software running so you can really see what's happening in Ableton. I'll get a camera on the MIDI controller as well and capture the audio from Ableton in much better quality than what you're what you've been hearing so far. Okay, so let's do that right now. Okay, I think we are all set up. Let's have a go at recording the main riff, if I can actually remember how to play it. Okay, let's explore and learn some of the functions of the Launch Key 25 together. We have track buttons here, so I can switch between the tracks, and I have loaded up six tracks with the appropriate sounds already. I did that off camera and we are using Xenology for the entire track, nothing else at all. So let me play you through the sounds that we have and I'll use these two buttons to navigate. We have a drum kit, octave shift up and down. Maybe I should be using uh, headphones. Let me just uh, connect those up. Okay, I've connected up some phones just so we don't get some bleed. So this is a 707 kit, I think. Let's just open it up here to check. Yes, 707, 727 compressed. Which I think will be perfect for our application today. Let's go to the next track and I'm gonna try and use the controller keyboard as much as I can, even though I'm not 100% familiar with it yet, far from, but we'll just try and learn together what we can do without using the mouse and keyboard. That's the ultimate aim of any MIDI controller, I think is to try and reduce the number of clicking and keyboard commands that you need to do. So we'll try and use the keyboard where we can. The next track, bass. It's nice how we have the filter and resonance mapped up. And I'm using an instrument rack here, and that's so that I can easily get control. This is the main edit page. Right now, we're gonna get out of that, the keyboard. I can show the keyboard as well so you can see what I'm doing. There's the menu, out of edit mode, yes. What I've done is mapped up these primary controls, which actually differ a little bit for the different instruments, the different presets, but I've mapped these macros to the knobs here so that I can actually tweak the sounds of the preset, make adjustments without needing to open the edit window for the presets. So we won't be seeing that too much today, but in the background, we are running that. So let's carry on. We have another track three with the main riff. Okay, like that. Then we have a lead sound for the melody. Then we have a string sound. I'm not sure how we'll use this in the track, but we'll try and figure something out. And yes, we are unashamed, unashamed, unashamedly, not easy to say, in the key of C. I find that when you have such a limited range of notes like we have here, then C usually works out best. C or G, something like that, C, G or F. If you're in the key of B flat, for example, you can never get down to the bass note. So by using C, we get the maximum range of the keys. Some interesting modulation going on there.
And we might tweak some of these sounds. I see these macro controls aren't working all that well for me. But we'll get in and tweak those later on. Then we have finally a sound or a track I called Bells. Okay, so that's the tracks we have fired up and ready to go. And then we can navigate up and down through the session view. So Ableton has two views, a session view where we record small musical clips into these clip slots. And the tracks are vertical here, which might be a bit strange for those of you that are not used to using Ableton. But on each track, we can record separate clips. There's just a little MIDI or an audio, uh, an audio loop or something like that. And you can only have one playing at the same time on each track. So we can have one of these drum clips playing at the same time. You'll get the idea of this in a minute as we start building up our track. And then for the bass, we have a number of tracks as well. Now in Ableton, sorry, for bass, we have a number of clips. Of course, you can play clips from multiple channels at the same time, but you can't play two clips on the same channel. It's a bit of a tricky thing to get your head around in the beginning, but it does soon quickly make sense. If I press tab, we get to a more conventional linear timeline mode view, like you get in all of the other DAWs. And some DAWs are now starting to introduce session view concepts as well. Because this is a really nice way to quickly sketch out a composition, trigger the clips and make up a track on the fly, as you will see. Oh, and by the way, I'm hearing on my headphones, you might be hearing it as well, a lot of swooshing, whooshing, noisy sounds in the background. Now that's partly because it's raining outside and that you might be picking up that on the microphone, but also it's the Juno analog chorus that's enabled on many of these presets and it's causing a bit of background noise. So I wanna see if we can dial that back or configure that. So I do find it a little bit distracting when nothing is going on. Right, let's record our main riff. So I'm going to go to that track. Uh, you can see here it's armed as well. So it's just a case of recording. So uh, And there's a little bit of pitch drift instability here, which I assume is part of the modeling as well. I'm not a big fan of it actually, but I was unable to dial it out. Let's take a quick look at the plugin. So if we go into edit mode, you can see we have some parameters to adjust this. We have the condition of the instrument, pitch drift, but I have them dialed all the way back, but even so I'm still hearing it. I actually want to get rid of the dynamics as well. I don't think I want any velocity sensitivity here. Okay, that'll do. Oh, and I'm also running it through some stock reverb effects here. You can see the send level here. And some delay. I'm not happy about this out of tune sound, but maybe it's authentic analog and it'll work well in the mix. We'll just have to see. So now we need to record a clip. Um, we got the metronome controls here, click on and off, which is on right now, one bar counting, I hope. Let's uh, hit here, see what happens. Okay. Okay, and this is something I've noticed with Ableton, you often miss the first click of the counting. So let's undo that. That's no fault of the controller keyboard. It's just the way Ableton seems to work. There we go. Okay, and hopefully we captured that so we can play it back now by just hitting the pad here. I'm gonna quantize it. It seems to have quantized quite nicely. If you want to look at the clip in detail and edit it, you can do that here. I'm a bit rusty on the shortcuts, but that seems to be pretty well quantized. To me, we could even quantize the note length if we wanted to, but we'll leave it as is for now. 
Okay, cool. That was the main riff. Let's go on and record the bass. Okay, the bass line then. Sounds really great. That's what a warm, thick pad sound that is. Let's take a look, see what we've got. Uh, double click there, open the instance of Xenology. Click on edit if you want to see some of the details. And I can see we have some dynamics, which I don't want. There we go. It's nice to have the touch sensitivity perhaps. But right now I want to remove it. Um, we have a Juno 106 chorus here. Maybe this is introducing some of the Juno 106 chorus. <laughs> That's the one and two buttons pressed down at the same time. I'm going to go for that one, for this sound, switch it off. <laughs> that sounds a lot thinner. Both the Juno and the GX8P benefited a lot from this lovely analog chorus sound. Okay, let's record. I think we know the routine. Let's get the right octave. I'm going to make sure we are selecting that pad. Let's go. I think I want a simpler pattern here actually. So let's undo that. Okay, do it one more time, just maybe. Yeah, let's go for something simple. Yeah, okay, that will work, I think. Not too shabby, let's record some drums. Right, so what I wanna do here actually is begin to build up the track with an intro, a main section, a B section perhaps. Uh, you can see we have lots of clip slots available to us. So we can just, just leave this line as it is, the first line, as an intro. And I can trigger them by pressing this button here, which will trigger all of the clips in the same row, the same line. Okay, that's great. So let's duplicate this one to the track below and let's duplicate this one to the track below. And now when we trigger that line, that's <laughs> uh, crazy out of tune. I'm not sure what's going on there. Got it. Time to put together a melody. Will that work? Yeah. Well, that's sounding okay. We'll work on those drifting oscillators in a separate video or in between or something. But now let's see if we can do some kind of B section. Whoa, 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 stop, stop. What's going on? Nice, nice, we got the take. I might bring in some strings here as well. Maybe that's an effective place to put some strings in. So let's move over to that track. Quantize. After a lot of messing around, this is the melody I came up with using the bells and the lead. It's not great, but I think it'll do for this video.
Okay, I also showed you there quickly how you can cycle up and down through the scenes and start them and stop them, which is how you'd build up your track. And eventually what you'd probably want to do is to copy this. You can actually record over to the arrangement view as you're doing all of these live manipulations of the clips and record that over there and then polish it, edit it, add some transitions and stuff and you're good to go. Okay, there you go. And I reckon that might be just about enough for today. And I've really enjoyed using the Novation 25, although I do wish that I'd gone for the bigger model with the faders so you can do the mixing on the fly and with the buttons so you can arm the tracks for recording and select the tracks and so on. I think that's a much better proposition actually. It would be for me anyway to have a slightly larger keyboard, the 49 or the 61 with all of the extra phases. Phases? <laughs> faders but go and check Novation's website if you want to see what the difference is between all of the different models. So this was the Novation Launch Key Mark III and Xenology slightly out of tune JX8P. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to we can polish this track and finish it off a little bit later on a separate video. But for now, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing. A special thanks to all of my patrons and channel members. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Yeah.